Amazon and Shopify, do you use both of those pretty heavily? Yeah, we, we use both of them very differently. So Amazon, you don't own the customer. You don't really even own the listing. Shopify, you can control everything. You can talk to the customer. So for us, we started, you know, very strong Shopify in the first year. It was like 90-10. Now we're about 70-30, but still. Wait, so 70 Amazon? No, 70 Shopify. Whoa. And oh. 30 on Amazon. So our Amazon, we've actually started to put more focus onto it in the last like 18 months. But mm -hmm. before that, it was like we put it up there, but we didn't really focus on it as like a main channel, which was wow. because we wanted to focus on Shopify and, and make the business like stronger on our own platform. But I mean, people are going on Amazon. You may as well put a little more, little more effort into it. But then they take like a hefty cut of stuff, right? Oh, yeah. They take like 30%. 30? Yeah, between oh. like fulfilled by Amazon and their fees and all the stuff. Yeah, they take a pretty hefty percentage. So is that worth it? Uh, yeah, because they get a ton of traffic. <laughs> so and, and they also handle the customer. So while you don't own the customer, they also deal with um, returns. And, and we don't have a very high return rate, thankfully. Sometimes, you know, I return stuff to Amazon mm -hmm. and they make it so easy that it's super annoying as a seller on Amazon because nothing's mm -hmm. wrong with the product. Uh -huh. But they make it so easy that... Even though we have a very low return percentage, generally, like less than 1%, it's more, more on Amazon just because they make it so damn easy. So I personally got my start in e-commerce too. I started a company called House of Rave years ago uh, when I was in high school and college. And um, let me ask you this. Uh, does selling physical products suck? It's so funny. Everyone that sells digital products is like, oh, I wish I could sell something physical. And then I'm looking at you know, importing and shipping. And I'm like, oh, digital is so much easier. So while it is nice to like be able to touch and feel your physical product and actually hold it, you know, there's pluses and minuses to everything. I think for us as a, as a company, it was good starting with physical products because there is sort of a higher barrier to entry than it, than there is a digital product. Mm -hmm. So you have to do a lot of work to get it to you. And then it's like, okay, well, we created this physical product. Now I, we can go digital and you kind of have a little more um, people have a little more confidence that you can deliver if you you have a physical product in their house. I mean, one thing I always kind of, so I was fortunately a drop shipper. So I was a middleman. So I never actually had to buy the product first and hold it in a warehouse mm -hmm. and then get an order and then finally get money after a while. Um, it, I feel like with e-commerce stuff, like one big problem I see is like, let's say I order a thousand doodads. Mm -hmm. You have to spend a ton of money before you get that money. Yeah. Right? Well, yeah. I mean, at least at the start, if you don't have any terms with your manufacturer, and I, we have really good terms with our manufacturer, so we don't actually pay them right now until 60 days later. Hmm. And then I just negotiated 2021. It's 120 days. Whoa. So it's like four months where we can essentially sell the inventory and use the money that we make from it to pay our manufacturer. Now, you can't get that right out of the gate, but that's a good way. Like Once you have some history with a manufacturer and, and they want to work with you, you can sort of negotiate that. And Neville, I was a drop shipper also. Yeah. I had an eBay store when I was 14. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I would, uh, my biggest thing that I would sell back back in the day was Dawson's Creek DVDs. Oh, wow. Because they didn't have them in <laughs> Ireland. And so Sorry I would for laughing so hard. <laughs> import them from Canada and I would sell them on eBay. What, at 14? Yeah. That's pretty impressive. How many Dawson's Creek CDs did you sell? A ton. A lot? Yeah, I, I made enough that I was able to buy my first laptop because we, we had to use a family computer uh -huh. and we had like an hour to use it. I'm like, mom, how am I supposed to run my business in an hour a day? Uh, because she wouldn't give me extra time, even mm -hmm. though I'm trying to do this eBay thing. So then I made enough money to buy my own laptop and then I could do it as much as I wanted. Wow, not 14. That's awesome. I, I fortunately got my uh, start early. I think honestly in Boy Scouts was like the first time I would sell stuff. Mm -hmm. You were forced to go like door to door, like yeah. child labor. No, not really, but like <laughs> go door to door and sell like tickets to stuff. Yeah. Now remember, it's interesting. That's like as a kid, you realize like you have this product. And someone will give you money for it. And like you keep the difference between the cost and mm -hmm. what they pay. You're like, oh, that's how business works. At its kernel, that's kind of it. It's really cool. Um, when it comes to promoting a physical product, is it any different than a digital product? I don't think so. I think physical is a little easier because they are getting something like physical. And, and the idea of being able to hold something is much more um, real to people, mm -hmm. especially if they've never bought a digital product. So in mm -hmm. some cases, it's easier. In other 
times it's harder if it's like shipping and like when is it going to get to me and and like the actual getting the inventory and, and selling it but as far as the messaging goes i think if a digital product you have to you know really make it very clear what it is they're getting mm -hmm. and sometimes there's a little confusion there um if you're not clear but i don't think it's much different yeah i, I mean we did a we did an experiment with you a, a while ago where you're one of the few people that would allow us to like show the process like how it's done we made an email and most of it was just showing the product yeah like, you don't really need to describe it when they could just see it like built like the journal filled yeah. out or something like that um kind of newbie question but um do you have like a warehouse full of stuff somewhere like you sell a lot of product like does it like sit somewhere yeah we have three warehouses full of stuff Whoa. we have one in california we have one in florida and we have one in the uk we also had one in australia but we recently got rid of that wow Th i mean isn't that expensive to maintain it is expensive, but it's also depends on your goal. So for us, in our initial Kickstarter campaign, we had a lot of Europeans also because I'm from Europe. I, I also have people that buy because of that. Mm -hmm. And so if you were selling from the U.S. and shipping from the U.S., it's just really expensive. And mm -hmm. so it's like, is someone going to pay 20 bucks to ship something? Like we all hate paying for shipping. Yeah. And international shipping is so expensive. So when we first launched the Kickstarter... Uh, we had enough European people that we went straight to international warehouses right away. Was that the smartest idea? Probably not, especially because we, we were so divided, right? Mm -hmm. So we had a UK warehouse, we had an Australia warehouse, we had one in the US, and we recently got rid of our Australia because it was just like not the juice was not worth the squeeze. We were going to ship from the UK instead. Mm -hmm. um, and you ended up paying like taxes over there. And it's just like for a small team, it's just a lot of hassle but the european one still made sense made sense to keep huh oh okay i kind of see why you would like outsource everything to amazon in this case yeah it like stresses me out to think that you have well, that now many we customers have and mexico amazon canada we have amazon mexico we have amazon regular american and i i feel like we're on multiple warehouses in amazon because now we're global with them mm -hmm. which we just did in the last six months and yeah, it, it does make it much easier. So like, this is also a newbie question. I got out of e-commerce in 2011. So I'm like way behind the times on that. But is there like Amazon, does they literally keep like a big pallet of like best self journals, like in some warehouse in Mexico and they're sh yeah. shipping them out. And if someone sends a return, it comes back to them and they somehow handle that. They just do yeah. all of that. Mm -hmm. That's actually pretty cool. That's kind of like publishing a book on Amazon where yeah. it's just like, they just do everything and you don't even, you have no idea what's going on. It just happens. And they also get the best rates on shipping. And so, you know, you can't really beat them as far as logistics. They just take a, a hefty fee, but they get enough customers that it makes total sense. 